So you might have already seen authorization headers in HTTP requests that look like this, Bira space token. And today we're actually going to, going to discuss what are these Bira tokens. So the easiest way to understand this is by making an example. So let's suppose you're walking around the streets and you have some cash with you. Yeah, $5. Okay, so you walk around and for whatever reason you lose these $5. Okay, you just drop them on the ground or someone robs you or whatever. Yeah, so now this person has the money and the person with the cash can now go to a store and buy some stuff, right? So the store is not going to ask, hey, is this actually your money or how did you uh, obtain this money? Um, the person can just go there and use the money. And this is exactly what Bira tokens are. So Bira token is a token where... Any, every, anyone in possession of the token can use it. Okay, it's similar to cash. He who has the cash uh, can just use it however he or she likes. You don't need to prove, like at least in most cases, where you got the cash from. And this is what Bira tokens are. Now, of course, this is a very simple form of, of authorization, uh, which also has like some downsides, right? So if you don't have to prove that it's actually your token or that you got the token, uh, then someone else might just steal it and use it. So if we go back to the IT world, then if someone is able to obtain like this token, then you have a data breach because then server B is going to think, ah, yeah, okay, uh, this is definitely server A, even though it's not. And there's like a few other, or like there's a few ways on how you can handle this. One way I just quickly wanted to go over is something called proof of possession. So in our example, this would mean that you can't just directly use the cash, but you would actually need to tell the store owner or you would need to prove to the store owner that this is the cash you have legitimately obtained. Uh, now, this is probably where the metaphor a little bit ends because this is like not how reality really is. But uh, in the IT world, this usually works with some form of certificates. So you have some, uh, every party generates like a private key and a public key you generate certificates, you exchange certificates, and then you use like this token and only he who can prove that he has the private key of the respective certificate can actually use this token. But I don't want to go into detail here too much because I will make a dedicated video about this, specifically in the OAuth world. So how do you implement like mutual TLS and how do you make sure that only he who has who is in possession of a specific private key can use it. Yeah, but the idea is clear. Yeah, so every server generates like a key pair, a private and a public key. Uh, then everybody creates like a certificate from the from their respective public key. Then people swap certificates. And then you somehow have to prove that you are in possession of the private key to the respective other party before you can use it. So that would, for example, be a proof of possession. Of course, as you have seen, this would make things a little bit more complicated. Just imagine uh, if you buy like some gum for like 50 cents, you would need to prove to the store owner where you got the 50 cents from. That's sort of a little bit complicated, but in high security environments like this uh, proof of possession uh, notions makes a lot of sense. Cool. So I hope uh, it's clear what Bira tokens are. Stay tuned and make sure to check out my future videos for uh, Mutual TLS where I will elaborate on proof of possession. And yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.